This is how you're gonna save money in your apartment this year. Saving money is tougher than ever with rising costs in rent, groceries, gas, and even streaming subscriptions. But don't forget about the significant impact of high utility bills. Forbes Home states that the average utilities is over $400 a month, which equals over $5,000 a year. But what if I told you you can lower this number? Even more than that, you could do it without having to spend a dime and help the environment. After exploring the web and rigorous testing for an entire two weeks, I uncovered tips and methods to achieve this, and you're going to know them all in this video right now. You might have heard of these first set of tips from your parents, grandparents, but don't dismiss them because these tips are just as powerful in saving you money and energy as the rest of the tips are in this video. With the first common tip being to unplug your vampire devices, like those with connector boxes or light indicators, to stop the constant energy draw. And if you have them, you could use power strips to turn off multiple electronics all at once instead of just having to unplug one by one. Now, some examples of vampire devices would be TVs, coffee makers, video game systems, streaming devices, and computers. Another common tip you might have heard of is developing the habit in turning off lights in unoccupied rooms. You can set alarms before bed and leave visual cues to help you remind you to turn off these lights. And if you need a light on for your pets, opt for a single light source or open your blinds for natural lighting. The next common tip is to consider doing chores during off-peak hours, such as weekends, to reduce electricity costs. Off-peak hours occur when most people are not using appliances, while peak hours, when energy costs more, are typically in the evenings when people return home from work and start selling in by turning on lights, the TV, hot showers, and so on. And to better help you out, I compiled this handy chart here based on your time zone on which peak hours or off-peak hours are, and you can get your free download there in the description below. Lastly, you can save energy by taking shorter showers by just cutting off one minute off the national average of eight minutes, thus saving 13% in water heating costs. Moving on to the kitchen, let's begin with the fridge, a 24-7, 365-day year appliance drawing substantial power. Now, changing the temperature can significantly reduce the energy consumption on these fridges, and while modern fridges can be adjusted from the outside, Older models are gonna to have to be ingested from the inside. And the FDA recommends keeping the food under 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but setting it between 37 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit to preserve freshness and save money. And freezers should be maintained at zero degrees Fahrenheit. And when it comes to cooking, consider batch cooking. You could do this by simply doubling the ingredients and the recipes you already know how to cook and just storing the leftovers in the refrigerator or the freezer. And if you want to take it one step further, you can plan a week worth of meals and cook it on the weekends, which is off-peak hours. By being intentional with the time and cooking in bulk, you use the stove and oven less, thus saving you electricity and money. Finally, when cooking, make sure you use the correct pot and pan size, because if you use a smaller cookware than the actual burner, you're going to waste up to 40% electricity. Lastly, the downside of cooking is washing dishes. Luckily, most apartments have dishwashers, and while they use less water than hand washing, they consume a significant amount of electricity. So to cut costs, run the dishwasher when it's full to avoid wasted energy. Additionally, consider air drying or using a towel instead of the drying feature to save 15% on the energy consumption. Now, going to the laundry room, running your washer and dryer can be costly in your apartment, especially if you do frequent loads. So in order to cut laundry costs, focus on full loads, which doesn't mean overstuffing, but filling them about two thirds. Next, when washing clothes, opt for the coat cycle to save on heated water costs, as modern detergents can effectively clean clothes even with cold water. Save the hot water for bed sheets and the towels or anything contagious materials such as if someone was sick or if you work in a hospital. But for everyday use, especially in winter, using the cold water feature suffices. Lastly, the dryer consumes a ton of energy, but cleaning out the lint filter and using a lower setting for a longer time can reduce energy usage and your bill. Alright, so as the colder season starts to come, insulating our apartments is essential to stay warm and to save on heating costs. Let's begin by inspecting the front door. And the way you gotta do this is by placing your hand along the door frame and see if you can feel any cold air blowing through. If you do, you could go ahead and call your apartment management so they could go ahead and repair it. But if not, a free and simple method is just to get a towel and roll it up and place it underneath the door, which is going to stop that cold draft. Next, to continue to improve insulation, go ahead and keep those windows and blinds shut. And I know it might seem a bit obvious, but it does help. And if you do feel like you need that extra insulation, 
I would make a small investment in buying some curtains or blackout curtains so it could have all year round insulation. Alternatively, a more budget friendly solution is to use plastic wrap or bubble wrap on your windows. Unfortunately though, I didn't get to test that method out. So I can't say for sure if it works 100%. Now you might be familiar with fans keeping you cool during the summer, but did you know it can also keep you warm during the winter? In order to do so, simply locate the fan switch and adjust it accordingly. Clockwise on the lowest setting will push warm air down and according to the Department of Energy, they state that this adjustment can save you up to 15% on your winter energy bill. Lastly, with Black Friday approaching, a lot of people go shopping for TVs, holiday lights, and streaming devices because of deals. And if you're going to go shop for a TV, I recommend shopping for a UHD model just because they do save you energy and save you money. Additionally, prioritize devices and holiday lights with LED in the name, which is known to consume less energy. And when picking a streaming device, look for the ones that have Energy Star certification, ensuring energy efficiency. Popular Energy Star streaming devices are going to be Roku's Apple TVs and 4K Max Amazon Fire Sticks. And that's it. I want to share these tips with you because I believe they made a big impact in my life and I think they can in yours too. Now, was I perfect in following these tips every single day? No, I mean, I would forget to turn off lights here, to unplug devices there. But I mean, that's okay because checking my last energy bill and seeing my highest energy usage drop from 40 kilowatts to 20 kilowatts and my lowest from 16 kilowatts to 7 kilowatts after I started using these tips and methods, it's just proof that you don't need flawless consistency. You just need to start and do what you can when you can. So don't be overwhelmed. Don't be stressed. These are tips to help you out. Well, here's to a brighter, money-saving, eco-friendly future. I hope you found this video very informational. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Much love.